Hi, how is it going? Welcome to Code with Z. In today's video, we have to check if this line is straight or not. Why? Well, because that's what lead code 1232. Check if it is a straight line is asking us to do. As you can see, it says you're given an array called coordinates. For example, these coordinates that we have here, they're going to be inside of an array. Each coordinate is going to have an X and Y, an X and Y, an X and Y. Okay. And then it says where X and Y represent the coordinate of a point on our line check if these points make a straight line in the xy plane so you basically have to check if this is a straight line or not using these coordinates that we have here all right let's see how we can solve this let's first see if this is actually a straight line or not well if we check you can see that it's not if this was a straight line it would have actually went something like this but as you can see from this point on it's not gonna be straight so it's gonna make this whole thing not straight Okay, let's put this down here so you can actually have more space here. Our approach is going to be really, really simple. You see, if a line is straight, it's going to have the same slope between each two coordinates. And we actually calculate the slope using this formula. So y2 minus y1. So for example, if we're calculating the slope between these two points, we're going to get y2, which is this 3 that we have here, minus y1, which is this 2 that we have here, and then divided by x2 minus x1 x2 is 2 and x1 is basically this number 1 that we have here. Whatever the slope is going to be for here, it's going to be the same between these two and it's going to be the same between these two if this was a straight line. So our approach is going to be really simple. We can start by getting the slope between the first two points and then we're going to loop through our array that was given to us that's filled with coordinates and we're going to calculate the slope and if at any point the slope that we had between any two points was different from the first slope that we had between these two, that means our line is not going to be straight because it has to stay consistent throughout the whole line to give us a straight line. But there's a simple problem. Let's say we had a line like this. The coordinates for this line is going to be something like this. As you can see, the x side of it is going to be always zero because it's literally at the position of zero on the x side, right? So when we actually calculate x2 minus x1 it's going to be 0 minus 0 and that's going to give us 0 and we're going to have 0 at the bottom of our formula here and we can't divide by 0 so that's going to be a problem so we need to make sure that we actually cover this edge case and we actually handle dividing by 0 and to solve this problem what we're going to do is that we're going to get rid of division this division is basically going to be dy divided by dx right y2 minus y1 is going to be dy x2 minus x1 is going to be dx right so we can actually do a cross multiplication to get rid of our division so if we actually convert this into cross multiplication it's going to be dy multiplied by x2 minus x1 is going to be equal to dx multiplied by y2 minus y1 simple as that so now we actually got rid of our division and we don't have to worry about dividing by zero so we still have the same thing but instead of division, we have multiplication. All right, so let me put this here, and then we're gonna calculate the dy and dx for these two, because we're gonna need them in our formula. As you can see, we need dx and dy. So we're gonna say, okay, we wanna calculate the dx and dy for these two points in the beginning, and then we're gonna start looping through all of these. Each time when we start, we're gonna get the two first coordinates, so we can actually calculate dx and dy. So for dy, we're gonna say y2 minus y1. So three minus two. 3 minus 2, that's going to give us 1. And then for dx, we're going to say x2 minus x1. 2 minus 1, that's going to give us 1. So now dy is 1 and dx is going to be 1. Now that we have our dy and dx, and we got those from these two first coordinates that we had, we want to loop through the rest of our coordinates and check if this formula is still valid, meaning if the left side is going to be equal to the right side. If we actually come across a situation where that's not going to be true we're just going to return false because that means we don't have a straight line we need to update the names that we have here why well because this was for calculating dy and dx between the first two now that we're going to loop through it it's not going to always be y2 and y1 because we might have a thousand coordinates so this is going to change into y minus y1 and x minus x1 that's the only change so we still have dx we still have dy. And if something's foggy, don't worry, because we're going to have a visualization and we're going to go through all of this. But 
Y is basically the current Y that we're going to be looping through. For example, this one, because this is the third coordinate and we want to loop through whatever remains after the first two coordinates and we're going to have these two. This is going to be the first one. So this Y is going to be the current Y that we're going to be looping through. So for example, this Y is going to be this four that we have here because that's the Y for this coordinate. And Y1 is going to be representing the coordinate of the first Y that we had. And it doesn't really matter because if it's a straight line, we can even use the second one. But we just went with Y1 because it, it doesn't really make any difference. We can even make this Y2 and use this three that we have here and have X2 over here as well. But it doesn't really matter because if it's a straight line, this formula has to be true, meaning the left side should be equal to the right side. Same thing for x. x is going to be the x value for our current coordinate that we have here, and x1 is going to be the x for the first coordinate that we had, and that's going to be this one that we have here. Okay, let's see how we can actually solve this. So let's visualize it. We know that dx is 1, so dx is 1, and then we say y is equal to this 4 that we have here, because this is going to be our current coordinate, so 4, and y1 is going to be the first y that we had, and that's going to be 2, so 4 minus 2, and then this side is 1, as you can see. So 1, and then current x is going to be 3, and x1 is going to be 1. So we're going to have this formula here. Well, let's calculate it. 4 minus 2, that's going to give us 2, and 3 minus 1, that's going to give us 2. Is 1 multiplied by 2 equal to 1 multiplied by 2? Well, yeah, 2 is equal to 2, so that means we're good to go, and we don't need to return false. So we're going to move on to the next one. In this form, we're going to have this one over here. We're going to calculate both sides again. We're going to say dx is equal to 1, y is 6 and y1 is 2 this side is gonna be 1 multiplied by x is 4 and x1 is 1 so we're gonna have 6 minus 2 that's gonna give us 4 and then 4 minus 1 that's gonna give us 3 and as you can see these two are not equal so that means we're gonna return false because these two sides are not equal simple as that so once we actually have this situation we're just gonna return false and if that was not the case we're just gonna return true so this formula is really important now let's code this in the simplest way possible alrighty let's code this together so the first thing that we need is gonna be the coordinates of the first and the second points so just like we saw in the slides let's get those we're gonna say const x1 and y1 and this is gonna be equal to coordinates at the first index and then we need to get the second one so we're gonna say at the second index x2 and y2 and then we need to calculate our dy and dx const dy is gonna be equal to y2 minus y1 and then const dx is equal to x2 minus x1 and then now we have these two we're just gonna loop through the rest so we're gonna say for let i being equal to 2 because we've actually taken care of the first two coordinates that we had here. So we're going to start from 2, and we want to keep on looping as long as i is smaller than coordinates dot length, and then i plus plus on each round. Here we're going to say, get the x and y from the current coordinate. So this is going to be coordinates i. And then we're going to check our simple formula. We're going to say, if dy multiply by x minus x1 just like we saw in the slides is not equal to dx multiply by y minus y1 return false and if we actually exit this loop and be done with the loop without returning false that means we can actually return true because we didn't have to return false now let's run this and see if we can actually get accepted I hope I've not made any typos and yep we got accepted let's submit this and see if we can actually pass all of the test cases da -da 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 -da. and yep we got accepted that's awesome thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coding